My name's Adam Manaka and I'm the financial controller for High Tech Oils. With our national capacity, we can now service Australian companies nationwide. Of late, we have now expanded into the New Zealand market. Here at High Tech Oils, we receive premium base oils and premium additive packs. Together, with our highly trained staff, we manufacture over 500 premium quality products. High Tech Oils is Australian made and Australian owned. On today's show, we head over to Scotland and to the Knockhill Circuit for round five of the British Sidecar Championship. Then we return to Australia and head to Willowbank Raceway in Brisbane for our continued coverage of the Gulf Western Oil 51st Winter Nationals and today we feature Pro Alcohol. And later in the show, we head over to Europe and to Spain for round one of the 2018 FIM Trial GP World Championship. This is Speed Week. Hello again everyone, welcome to sunny Scotland and when I say sunny Scotland I mean sunny Scotland. We're at Knock Hill in incredible weather conditions for round five of the High Dye Construction Equipment British Sidecar Championship after what was an incredibly demanding four races at Cadwell Park in round four. It really sorted up the championship table but it also gave Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark a handsome lead but with only 15 bikes on the grid here because of the decimation at Cadwell there's an awful lot to go for so a lot of people will be jumping up the table. Let's see how they look. Well, this round brings us to the halfway point in the season and that's an impressive lead Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark have, isn't it? But Ellison Richardson on that 600 doing well. Gary Bryan, best season ever for him. Horse pole there too. Ricky Stevens going a bit better now they're getting used to the 600. He's second in the table. A fantastic crowd were gathered for race one in sublime conditions. We come here once a year with cycles of this stature and the Scots absolutely love it. It was Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark on pole position with Todd Ellis alongside. Gary Bryan moved very quickly out past his stepson to slot into second place behind Kershaw and Clark, who made absolutely no mistake when the lights changed. Ellis was in third, Horsepole and Jimmy Connell sporting their brand new yellow helmets, the customary colour that Gary Horsepole always used, were in fourth, but Kershaw and Clark out in front. Ellis and Richardson, though, on the 600, hung in there, but they didn't have the pace up the hill and over the start, finished straight. Time and time again, Gary Bryan got them on the fast bits. But Ellis was tenacious, he always is, and Knock Hill was absolutely no exception. He fought tooth and nail with Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde, eventually getting the better of them. Ricky Stevens passed Gary Horsepole only to have the compliment returned along the bottom straight at Hislops, but on the braking, Stevens went in again and reclaimed the position. He was to stay there this time, although Gary Horsepole did have a serious nibble over the start-finish line. Stevens, though, only to slot in front, going into Duffer's dip. It was as easy as that. Through the inside he went. Once he was able to open a bit of a gap, the position was his, but Rob Biggs and Jerome Schmitz were having a hard time staying ahead of Brian Gray and Jason Pitt. Both on 600s, this pair had a race-long battle, but at the front, Kershaw and Clark were sublime and impeccable again as they swept to victory number one at Knock Hill, increasing their points tally by a further 25. All 15 outfits finished, Gary Bryan completed the podium, but it was a great display by these boys on the scene of their massive accident in 2015. 11 seconds was the margin from Ellis, Brian, Stevens, 
That's that horse pole battle. You saw it. Simon Gilbert and Jack Tritton, a great ride for them ahead of Rob Biggs and Jerome Schmitz. The boys from Northern Ireland, O'Neill and Fitzpatrick, claimed 11th. Race one victory, it was then for Kershaw. Race two, reverse grid. Now you've got to pay attention in this one because an awful lot happened on the opening lap. Kershaw and Ellis were down on row five. At the front were two completely new boys, Neville Jones and Mark Gash got a cracking start, but they were on the inside. People were charging through. Across went Neville Jones, clipped the back of Gary Horsepole, and went off with Simon Gilbert and Jack Tritton locked together into the back of Kershaw, who got it sideways, went Todd Ellis. These guys almost came back into the traffic. Up went the hand of Mark Gash, because you could clearly see that Nev Jones' outfit was badly damaged. The radiator took a crash as well. There was no red flag, though. They got it back, and this is a replay. You can see how it happened. They came together. These guys were locked. There was no way that they could be separated. Horsepole took the advertising hoarding out on the way. He lost his wheel arch too, and also suffered radiator damage, and the race went on. Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole were out in front being chased by Gary Bryan. Ricky Seams and Ryan Charwood were having a great time as well, making their way past Brian Gray. Kershaw, meanwhile, was at the back. Ellis there, with a dent in his nose, had something of better fortune on the opening couple of laps, but Kershaw was having to fight for it. Gary Bryan, meanwhile, assumed control at the front. He and Phil Hyde were looking good ahead of Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole, but Ellis was on his way. Riding with him, you can see how he went under Ricky Stevens. He's really got the measure of the double former champion this year. Kershaw gobbled up four in one fell swoop going into the hairpin, including his teammate with a dented nose, Todd Ellis. So Kershaw from the back of the pack on the opening lap was making great strides. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood neck and neck with the Brian Gray power biking R6, which seemed to have the measure of the Kawasaki, but not on the brakes. That was where Stevens was very good. Kershaw went past Dean Nichols. The next man on his shotgun sight was Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde, who were out leading the race. Ellis, too, went past Dean Nichols. His teammate ahead of him, Kershaw. Nails were being bitten as Kershaw took the lead. Underneath Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde, he and Stuart Clark went, and it was the old firm back in business at the front. There you had the top three. Nichols was about to come under pressure by Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood. They made the pass and never looked back. Brian Gray was still in the hunt. Rob Biggs and Jerome Schmitz on the Taurus Tools Honda were having another brilliant ride. They go well here at Knock Hill, and this race was no exception. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood, meanwhile, had Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole in their sights. They made the passing move and were able to get the 600 in front, and there they stayed. But Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole were having a terrific ride here at Knock Hill, just as they've been going so well all season. Todd Ellis and Gary Bryan then were locked in a real struggle, but the youngster got the better of his stepfather, moving into second place as they went past Kevin Cable and Guy Palsy, who were at that moment just about one lap adrift. Rob Biggs and Jerome Schmitz were the next to have a go at Dean Nichols. And that was a good battle. Big bike played small bike. Simon Gilbert was there as well. And uh, despite that off-track excursion, they were still very much in the action ahead of Brian Gray. Simon Gilbert and Jack Tritton had a good weekend in actual fact, but nothing like the weekend by these two Scots as they took the checkered flag. Kershaw and Clark, victory number two. Second place it was for Todd Ellis, and another podium spot for Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde, who are in a very strong position in the points table. Kershaw Clark taking the plaudits from the hugely appreciative partisan crowd here in Scotland. The flag was being waved for them, and justly so. Amidst all that carnage, it was a 16-second advantage at the flag. That's the podium. Stevens made it to fourth, ahead of a good ride by Biggs and Schmitz.
Gilbert was there, and Nichols, seventh ahead of Brian Gray. Further down the order, you can see a DNF for both Jones and Horsepole. Could they get it fixed for race three? Time would tell. Chris Walker giving the trophies in the sunshine at Knock Hill. The third and final race here at Knock Hill and the grid is going to have a completely different look, certainly across the front row, because we've got two brand new names. Michael Bell and Sandy Mayhew are on pole position here. It's their first dip in the water of this championship. Lining up along them, Peter O'Neill, and Leon Fitzpatrick over from Northern Ireland. So these guys are going to have a rude awakening, I can tell you, because coming from the 10th row, alongside Todd Ellis, Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark, one and two in the championship, we're going to be charging through. It's going to be a cracker. 15 laps, let's get it on. 15 laps in glorious sunshine. And as I say, that is a completely different look. Look at this beautifully turned out outfit, Peter O'Neill and Leon Fitzpatrick. Let's hope that they make more of a presence in this championship. Maybe going into next season, when we go 600s, they'll join us full time. That would be good. Lovely crowd here. New grandstand as well down at the hairpin. That's the vantage point. Simon Gilbert and Jack Tretton settling down the number 51. Brian Gray on row two alongside Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole. And Michael Bell from pole position with Sandy Mayhew dumps the clutch. That's Phil Bell's brother and he's on Phil Bell's bike. So look after it, Michael, whatever you do. Away they went then. It was a uh, a bit of an overrun again and an excursion down through the bumpy stuff for Simon Gilbert. Sideways again for Gary Horsepole, running into the back of him, Gordon Shand and Tony Belsey. And I don't know if there was any damage there on Horsepole's bike, but certainly poor Gary Horsepole, after a good opening race, has had nothing but chaos here. But, oh dear, Gordon Shand in into the hoarding then that's bent that's not going anywhere peter o'neill number 55 leads ahead of the pole position man so the ulstermen have got their noses in front leon fitzpatrick i don't know anything about these guys but they're going to make their presence felt if they ride at this pace i can tell you up to third then from 10th place in row five steve kershaw and gary bryan and phil hyde pushing hard as well as by goes todd ellis todd ellis that was rocketing through Kershaw now in third, Brian Gray in fourth, Ellis in fifth. Stringing round here, look at the crowd all the way round this circuit. Absolutely massive crowd here at Knock Hill, all the way round the track. Biggest crowd we've seen for sidecars this season. And in this weather, you would not be surprised, would you? Under they go then. There's Michael Bell, just been relegated by Kershaw and Clark. Looking back from Stuart Clark's office, if you like. Michael Bell, he's a big lad, but he's managed to squeeze himself into Phil Bell's outfit. Uh, quick update on Phil Bell, he's got to go in for shoulder surgery. Todd Ellis having a look at the inside, going underneath Brian Gray and Jason Pitt. Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde there, and there it is, everybody cleanly off the line on lap three of 15. Still, Peter O'Neill and Leon Fitzpatrick lead this race. And they are something of a revelation, I can tell you, because uh, they've got some fast boys behind who have yet to make their presence felt. One of them is them just now. Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark alongside the Ulsterman up into the lead. So they now lead. So normal services resumed at the front. Kershaw and Clark, championship leaders, lead race three. Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde going past Brian Gray and Jason Pitt into the hairpin here, Taylor's hairpin, named after the Scottish and world champion, former champion, sadly no longer with us, Jock Taylor. Massive crowd around that hairpin. Over they go, Simon Gilbert there and Jack Tritton. Michael Bell and Sandy Mayhew with Gary Bryan, number 68 with Phil Hyde, right in their wheel tracks ahead of Brian Gray. That's fifth place you're looking at. Gray in sixth. So Michael Bell, another one who's doing a good job. You know, he's not really experienced at this level. He's done a few club races and uh, oh, he's doing an absolutely great job. Riding it on a knife edge. Gary Bryan then having a look at the back of it, but equally matched. We know that's a very quick Kawasaki, the number 88. Right, look at that. 
past Sean and Anthony Hilditch, but they left a hole big enough to drive an Arctic through. And Gary Bryan takes it. Through he goes. Gary Bryan, Phil Hyde then. Up one more place. One third distance. Sean and Anthony Hilditch retiring out of the running. So, oh, serious front end wobble. Might even be steering damper damaged. But the crew up from Maidstone will join Gary Horsepole spectating in pit lane on the sidelines. Well, 52.5 that lap. The record here, 51.455 held by Tim and Tristan Reeves. But Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark want that lap record. They are going to give it their damnedest. Still in second, Peter O'Neill, Leon Fitzpatrick, but going to be under pressure now from the red number six of Todd Ellis and Chaz Richardson at the hairpin. Well, they won't get them over the top of the start-finish straight because that's a big engine in Peter O'Neill's bike. It's got plenty of grunt, I could tell you. Great ride they're having. The Kawasaki in there is a quick one, ZX-10 and they stay in front of Todd Ellis, but not for long. Down through the twisty bits, Ellis and Richardson wiggle through, and uh, now they're going to show a clean pair of heels to the Ulsterman. But what a great ride those guys from Northern Ireland have had. Ellis then by, and away, on board with Simon Gilbert and Jack Tr Oh, that's a massive wobble. A bit out of shape there, but they've just about kept it on the tarmac. What happened? Oh, you can see over on the gravel on the left, it looks like Tritton has bailed out. The view from Rob Biggs's outfit, and there he is. He was rolling like a snowball through the gravel, but the youngster is OK. So whatever happened to that pair, it unseated him. Simon Gilbert now realises he doesn't have any ballast. He'd be quick in a straight line, but he wouldn't be very good round left-handers. But good to see young Jack Tritton up on his feet, all part of the learning curve. And meanwhile, the race goes on. Michael Bell. Michael Bell and Sandy Mayhew riding number 88 with Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole alongside. So two big engines there. Brian Gray on the 600. The veteran with a... Oh, what a Jason Pitt's done a great job all year. Those two ride so well together. But just look at the sidecar wheel there. Just flicks up. Gary Bryan now on the back of Peter O'Neill. They've had a brilliant ride. Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde all weekend. Having a look now, have they got the legs? It's Kawasaki plays Kawasaki, but yeah, the vastly experienced Gary Bryan does him on the brakes into the hairpin. So the Cranmore Racing Kawasaki, one further peg down the order. Second place now for Todd Ellis and Chaz Richardson. Third place for Gary Bryan and Phil High. Still fourth, Peter O'Neill and Leon Fitzpatrick. Remarkable, absolutely remarkable on lap nine of 15. And I can tell you, Steve Kershaw on lap six has done a 51.290. So he has got a new lap record here. Tim Reeves and Tristan Reeves from last year, their record has gone. Kershaw and Clark have got it. And uh, this battle going on now with Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole and Michael Bell and Sandy Mayhew, who have really shown everybody here what they're capable of that cycle wheel just pours the air so the passenger doing just enough to get them through the little chicane after duffer stip safely not easy i can tell you it's all so quick here at knock hill you get dizzy in 15 laps and we're on lap 12 of 15. still this battle going on dean nichols apparently got no answer at this moment in time for michael bell and let's hope we see Michael Bell as a regular competitor in this championship. Whether he's got his own bike or not, I don't know. It's brother Phil's is on at the moment. Time will tell. Well, these big Kawasaki's, nothing between them neck and neck. All 600s next year, I remind you. So that's going to be interesting. These guys are going to have to change everything and sell their engines probably to Australia. That seems to be the popular theory as to where they're all going to go. On board with Rob Biggs. Oh, sideways round. He and Jerome Schmidt spinning backwards into the gravel. Can he get it fired up? Fortunately, he can. It's not too deep there. The gravel track really, really good. What a popular place that is, spitting out stones. He's back on track with the Taurus tool bikes. Brian Wilson, the MD of that company, is helping Rob Biggs and has helped him really, really well. And Biggs is returning the compliment in preparing or helping to prepare a bike for Brian Wilson himself. 
uh, to campaign possibly in this championship if he can get up to speed. Kershaw and Clark on the penultimate lap with traffic ahead of them and a handsome lead making it three out of three provided they make it to the chequered flag without incident and there doesn't seem to be any indication that anything other than a victory is going to happen. Nev Jones having got it all sorted out and repaired still very much in the running is going to bring it home in eighth place. Nev Jones if he stays where he is. On the last lap Kershaw Clark then underneath Nev Jones so in among the tail enders now it's such a short lap here at Knock Hill. It's very easy to lap, especially when you're as fast as Steve Kershaw on that Santander Salt Molson Kawasaki, assisted by Express Tires of Lockerbie. And they are here, the Express Tires people, in their numbers to support Steve Kershaw as he takes the checkered flag. Victory number three for the Scots on home territory. Great ride by them and plenty of action all down the field. Another runner-up spot for Todd Ellis and Chaz Richardson consolidating their second in the championship. Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde will once again climb the podium to the third step and they've had a very, very good season indeed. Kershaw Clark then, total race time, 13 minutes. And let me tell you a lap record in the process. Brilliant time, 51.290. A new Knock Hill lap record. That's what they wanted, that's what they've got. It's a full set. 14 seconds the advantage, that's the top three. I can't tell you how impressed I am with Peter O'Neill and Leon Fitzpatrick. Anybody else around the circuit will share my view. Gray fifth, Nichols sixth, Bell, another outstanding debut for him and those, the four guys who didn't make it to the flag. Third place here, again, three out of three, Gary Bryan, Phil Hyde. How did you find that, uh, that race then, Gary? Uh, it was all right, a little bit tougher than before because um, I think Peter got away, the time I got through a bit of traffic, and uh, yeah, to pull up in to catch him, kept the same back tyre on, so yeah, it was a struggle. And Phil, you know, three out of three this weekend, I'm sure you've got a few people that you'd like to thank. Yeah, it's been a top weekend. Obviously, I want to thank CVR Global, uh, GBM Demolition and uh, Phil Jury Engineering. All, all help us out. And if it weren't for them people, we wouldn't be on the, on the grid. You know, it's been a great weekend. Gary's been flying all weekend. So, yeah, it's been awesome. Really enjoyed it. Second place, Todd Ellis and Charlie Richardson. That race looked like it was a little bit less eventful than race one. Yeah, it was a lot less eventful. Everyone was well behaved around the first corner. It, it takes a bit of struggling to get past with them with a 600 light because you can't go with them in a straight line, but kept chipping away and got there in the end. And Charlie, this is your second year, obviously, riding with Todd and uh, having a fantastic year so far. What's he like as a driver? He's uh, quite exceptional, really, considering he's only got a year of experience and, uh, you know, a few seconds faster everywhere we're going. So, you know, onwards and upwards, really, aiming for the main championship. Winners, Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark. You made that look easy, boys. Yeah, you know, we meet, we've been working all weekend, even though we've had two wins, and we've still been working on the bike every session, and we made one small change, and that made all the difference in that one, and we got the break through the field, and just settled in dead comfy, just really enjoyed it, fantastic. And Stuart, you know, you're a big team, you know, you must have loads of people that you want to thank for just getting here. Yeah, absolutely, Paul, you know, Molson, Santum Death Salt, Roger Body, Ian Hamilton, Express Tires, Carl and Wendy Pring for KCP, all our little sponsors that come along all the time to help us out. You know, a Telltale Tim are up filming today as well, so just thanks to everybody, that, little or large, it's all appreciate, much appreciated. Apart from a hiccup in the opening round, Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark are pretty much doing what Tim and Tristan Reeves did last year, dominating. It's a massive lead they have. Ellison Bryan safely in third, second and third ahead of Stevens and Charlwood. Horse poles sitting well there despite one or two upsets. And that's the 600 Cup Ellis on top. We've had a fantastic weekend here at Knock Hill in glorious weather conditions. The show goes on because superbikes are coming up, a massive crowd, but the sidecars delivered. And we saw new names running at the front in race two. The Kershaw and Clark show though on home ground marches on. Brands Hatch comes up next. Thanks for watching, thanks for joining us. We've had a ball. See you in Kent.
Stay with us because after the break, we head to Willow Bank Raceway in Brisbane for our continued coverage of the Gulf Western Oil 51st Winter Nationals.